Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So today we're going to talk about um, statistical ledgers in Dynamics SL and obviously um, working with those in Excel statements. <clears throat> so this is just uh, the previous Wednesdays we've done. We started July 1st and that was <laughs> the July 1st one. I covered too much stuff. Um, and so we'll probably have future sessions uh, going over some of these items, but uh, as a whole session. <clears throat> and then these are the other ones. So last week we had, uh, we talked about the budgeting option and I did spend a lot of time on that. Uh, it's, it's not so much that it's complex, it's just I needed some time for that. And the budgeting option, I'm gonna use that with, uh, statistical ledgers, but I'm not gonna give you a lot of explanation about the budgeting option because either you were there last week or um, you can go and uh, look at the recording on that. So statistical ledgers in Dynamics SL. So you can create as many ledgers as you want to in Dynamics SL. And those can be actual or budget or statistical. And today, obviously, we're talking about statistical ledgers. Um, the ledger maintenance screen is in the GL module. And just examples of uh, where you could use statistical ledgers. And again, these are, well, not again, but <laughs> these are um, numbers that you might want to relate to on one of your financial statements. So amount of revenue per FTE. Uh, the amount of floor space, uh, you know, uh, maintenance expense divided by the amount of floor space. Um, occupancy, which is big in hotels, they all have to have a occupancy statistical ledger. Um, the number of users, you know, if you if you have a, a product. Um, and maybe you're living on the web and, and you wanna know the number of active users and relate that to the amount of making, money you're making or spending. Uh, products sold, um, services offered. Um, if you're a membership organization, you know maybe you wanna relate things to the number of members that you have. And that might be by different kinds of member types as well. So just like budget and actual ledgers, these are kept by fiscal year. So you don't need to make you know, a ledger for the year 2020 and then go make a new ledger for the same information, but for the year 2021, just, you know, if it's an employee ledger, just call it employee. Don't call it employees 2020, employees 2021, just call it employees because Dynamics SL already keeps those um, by fiscal year for you. Um, you can't, use the budget maintenance screen for statistical ledgers. I'm not sure why. I, I have a guess <laughs> as to why, um, but uh, unfortunately you can't use that screen. And that's the screen typically used to maintain budgets, particularly for using transaction import to get budget information in. So unfortunately you can't use that um, for statistical ledgers. So in Dynamics SL, the only way to get these in is is to put them in as uh, uh, journal transactions in the GL module and just make sure that you change to the right ledger. And that could actually have some advantages. Um, you know, you could put more detail in there. So you could, you could um, split up uh, a ledger amount into separate uh, lines in your journal transaction screen and then when you drill down in Excel statements, you, you can see those details that went into that number. Um, of course, in version three of Excel statements, you can do the same information, do the same thing by using notes on your ledger balance. And then when you drill down the first level, it'll show you those notes. So your notes could, could denote, you know, what makes up that number. <clears throat> so, Statistical, statistical ledgers can be easily maintained using the budgeting option in Excel statements. 
And again, last year, last week's session, we had a deep dive into the budgeting option. And neat things about doing using um, the budgeting option is you can see your previous entries for that ledger. So if you're going in and putting putting in the number of products sold uh, for uh, June because you just got those numbers, um, when when you go into that sheet, you can see the numbers that were put in for prior months, you know, May, April, and so forth, you're able to see those while you're entering the the numbers for your new period. Um, and you can also easily edit those previous period amounts. So you can see them. And if you have a correction to make to one of those, it's as easy as just going and typing the new number next to the number that you're, um, that you're um, editing or adjusting. Um, and then obviously another nice thing is you're in Excel. So if you're using some kind of formula to come up with your statistical uh, numbers, so maybe you've got a, a forecast of sales or something and you wanna use that with your um, uh, financial forecast, then you, you, you can do your uh, formulas to come up with those forecasts obviously very easily because you're already in Excel. So here's something I see fairly often is people creating new accounts to use with their statistical ledger. So that, that's completely unnecessary. It clutters up your chart of accounts. Um, I don't know of any good reason to do that. Um, I think perhaps some other systems require that. And so that's maybe why people do it. So I like to use existing accounts that are re perhaps related to the statistical amount. And how do you know they're related? Well, these are the same accounts that you're using um, to prorate or whatever in your financial. So if you wanna look at, you know, if, if, you're, if you're tracking a statistical ledger of products sold, you're, you're probably relating that typically to a revenue account, you know, so sales income, um, or, you know, you, you could be more interested in related to an expense account and so you could use an expense account in that case. It, it doesn't really matter all that much, but again, if you're relating it to a specific account and you use that account for the statistical uh, numbers, then it's a lot easier on your financial report to know where that is, as opposed to having to go grab the number from a different account um, when you're using it with an account row on your report. <clears throat> So uh, something else that a lot of people don't think about is you can also use these with subaccounts. So um, you could use one account for all your statistical ledgers, um, but if you had uh, uh, statistical numbers uh, per, let's say, department, so the number of employees per department, or the amount of floor space per department, or something like that, um, and you're using a subaccount subaccount for departments already, Sure, keep them in this, keep the statistical amounts in the same account and use different subaccounts to break those down by department. So use the subaccount department for those. And accounts, subaccounts to ledgers, well, obviously accounts to subaccounts in Dynamics SL is a many to many relationship, but those combinations of accounts, subaccounts to the ledgers is also a many to many relationship. So you could have you could use many accounts with the same ledger. So if you're keeping the number of employees um, and you want to know the number of management employees, you know, keep that with your, um, your salary account, your management salary account, officer salary, whatever. And then you also want to know the number of uh, non-officer employees, keep that number with your other uh, salary expense account. <clears throat> and in the demo, I'm gonna show you um, how powerful this can be to do that sort of thing. And then you can use many ledgers with the same account as well. So if you're tracking uh, both floor space and product sold by you know using an account or sub account that has to do with product A versus product B, um, you, you can uh, 
keep both those ledgers with the same account subaccount combination. So version three, um, because, and it's yeah still scheduled for next month, <laughs> um, and because we're we're using the same uh, Excel statements functionality, what's new in version three for statistical ledgers is the same as what's new for the budget option. So I didn't rename this because we're still using the budget option. So, and then future Wednesday sessions. So these are some of the ideas. And again, if you have any ideas for something you would like to see, let me know. So jump in, you know, during the meeting, unmute yourself and tell me, or send me an email. So I'm gonna give you a demo. And I, if you know me, you know, I always like to start Excel fresh, just to give you an idea um, that I'm not, don't have anything up my sleeve and this is super easy to create. So I'm not working with stuff, you know, that I've, that I've pre-created. So we're gonna use our, in this Solomon demo data, this is the only company with much in it. And we're gonna work on, I've got one statistical ledger in here called number of employees. And let's say we want to break out the number of employees by location. So I'm gonna put that in as a drop-down list. And when you're working with segments, you don't explicitly have to say up here, drop-down list. Uh, when you're working with segments, we kind of assume that you may wanna do a drop-down list. That would be the most logical choice when you're breaking things down by sub-account segments. And so you can, you, we also give you a button here. So that's the same thing as if I had chosen drop-down before I clicked insert. Um, so now we've got our company, um, the statistical ledger we're going to be working with, and then we've got our drop down for each of our locations. And when you create a drop down, that's this is where it's getting that information from. It makes this little Excel table, and so these are then all the different locations. So we've got Atlanta, Canada, France. Germany, Italy, administrators, offices, and default. And so let's say, oh, we don't want to, we're, we're not working with our statistical ledger by, by um, the default location, whatever that is. And so now in my dropdown, that's no longer a choice in, in my dropdown here. <clears throat> so I gotta put my fiscal year in and I always like to, give it a name, just like I had Excel statements give these cells names. So I'm giving that name of fiscal year. And the Solomon demo data is in the year 1999. And then I'm, I'm gonna insert my chart. Um, and of course, if you're the accountant for a company, you probably know your accounts, but this is a dummy chart, so. I don't necessarily know it. I'm just gonna go try to find, I think they're in the 5,000s here. Yeah, there we go. So my salaries accounts, so I'm gonna delete these. And then I'm gonna delete everything after those. Okay, so I've now got what, eight accounts? Oops double click here to widen that out. And uh, we're gonna keep these by period. So I'm just gonna create our 12 periods. <clears throat> and then E equals PTT bow, control shift A, go get my account. F4, F4, F4 to make that um, absolute column relative row. And then for my period, I'm going to point up here for F4 to make that relative column an absolute row. And then I will go across here and then down. Oops. Okay, so I've got, I dropped a few numbers in here for period 11. Um, <clears throat> so you can see we've got some statistical uh, numbers in there for one period. I just threw those in <laughs> this afternoon. Um, and what I want to do is I want to turn this into a budget entry sheet. So I'm going to have it insert period columns. 
and uh, I guess I'll leave that on the protect sheet. But what I want to do is I'm going to be putting those numbers in for each separate location. And the numbers I've got in there, we can, if we double click on one, you can see, oh, this is for uh, four different locations. So Italy, Canada, Atlanta, and administrative offices. So th those are already in there broken out by those. And that's what obviously is behind this number. So when I go in here, I'm going to say, yeah, create entry sheets. Um, and let's create a worksheet for each one of these locations. Okay, so that'll be a tab. And if I chose workbooks, it's going to make me a separate Excel workbook for each. And then I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, go ahead and make those entry sheets. And we're going to call this employees. You see, I already had one in there. Okay, so it's done. So I'm going to go and open that sheet that it made, the workbook. I'm going to go close this one. And so here is my entry sheet. And you can see it made a tab for each of the uh, locations that was on my dropdown, that I left on my dropdown. And if I slide across here, you can see those numbers again. But we can also see now where those were coming from. Okay, so these are the components making up those numbers. So, so here, what we've got is, you know, the number of officers in Atlanta, the number in, in, this, in this first account, the number of officers in Canada, and, and so forth. I can't remember, I think I put a few in one of these. Not that one. Um, and then, of course, in your financial, you're going to you're going to want to have, you know, salary, total salary, officer salary expense prorated by the number of officers. And so this makes it very easy to do that. Um, and if I wanted to edit, you know, one of these numbers or maybe I'm putting in now the number in period 12 because. Uh, Period 11 is is over, and now I'm going to go in and, and put the number in period 12. And so we'll say, well, here for Italy, nothing nothing changed. So I'm just going to, oops, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> oops, control Z. <laughs> um, I need to paste just the values in. So... I don't want to paste the formatting. If I pasted the formatting in, um, Excel Statements actually uses this color to find what it's working with. So I don't want to lose the color. And if you do this and it's too late, so you know, just do Control C, Control V, and I've lost those. You can you can always use the formula painter. So you can go and, and say, um, yeah, paint paint that back in. And so it's going to be the same, the same color as the cell I was on when I chose the uh, format painter there. But anyway, that's just a little gotcha. <laughs> um, and what did I have? Two, two. Um, so uh, let's say though, uh, let's see, we got numbers in Germany here. No. Say France. Should have used an earlier period, so I wouldn't need to do these scrolling. Okay, so Canada. So let's say in Canada. Oh yeah, we hired we hired another salesperson in Canada, but these other two numbers didn't change. Okay, and Atlanta. So maybe oh, we we actually didn't have sixteen. We we had the wrong number. We had 15 last month, and we have 15 this month as well, okay? And okay, these numbers are gonna be the same. So Control-C, 
paste special uh, values. And there's a shortcut for that as well. So I, I know it probably seems like I'm some kind of Excel super expert, but I don't have all those shortcuts memorized. The ones I don't use <laughs> much, I, I certainly don't have memorized. Okay, and so now we want to go and get those updated numbers in. So we go back to our budget upload. And what did I break? Let's try to reset. Uh, so what happened was this this screen had already been opened and it was associated with that first workbook that I closed. And that's why I got that error. So the little reset button can save you from glitches like that. And also in version three, um, we don't associate these with particular workbooks anymore. So that's a major technical <laughs> change that we made. It took many days to do that, but um, these are no longer associated with a particular workbook, which which is a good thing, but it's hard to do. <laughs> um, and yeah, we're we're working with 1999. So you know, this is a case I, th I mentioned last week. You may be using as both your guide and destination exactly the same company ledger and fiscal year, which is what we're doing here. Um, so we're just maintaining something so we can see what it was, <clears throat> and then you know, again, we're going to see what we're going to be putting in there. So I go ahead and update the ledger, and and now. I'm going to do my control alt F9 and we can see, oh yeah, those have changed. So I just forced it to go and refetch from the Dynamics SL database by doing control alt F9. And so it updated the numbers that it has now because I had pressed that button. And so we need to do this for the other locations as well. And we didn't have anything in France, did we? Uh, And I guess I didn't put anything in Germany either. What did I do? I thought I had, okay, Italy, we definitely do. I can see them over there. Okay. So again, control alt F9. If I just, if I want to verify that, oh yeah, those, those are what is now in the database, right? And did I do, yes, I did administrative offices. Atlanta, I didn't do. So let's do my budget upload into Atlanta. This is interesting. It found some problems. Okay. So that's because I inadvertently overwrote the PTD bell that was in there. So I'm just going to copy it back up. Oh, yeah, because I typed it in the wrong place, didn't I? So we want our 15 here. And I typed it on top of the formula. And that's why this protect sheet <laughs> is a good option because then you can't make a dumb mistake like I just did. So budget upload. And now those numbers are in there, do control. This is the one where I revise the number down from 16 to 15. So control alt F9, and you can see, oh yeah, we moved it down to 15. And if I go back to my all, and I'll do control alt F9 in here, now we can see the numbers in there for period 12, um, as well as period 11, and then again, broken down uh, by the different locations in this case. And so in your financial statement, <clears throat> so let's just, let's pretend this is our financial, <clears throat> our P&L, go and insert a couple of columns in here. Um, and I say, yeah, I, I, I wanna see my actual, so I'm going to go change the ledger being used for this report. And we're going to be using more than one ledger. I just like to have, I don't know why, I just i just like to have my, my actual ledger as the one in the upper left-hand corner here. Um, and let's make this period 11, because that's where the numbers are. <clears throat> and it uh, looks like we didn't have any numbers for these accounts, I thought we did. Control Alt F9. Huh, I thought we had salary numbers for period 11. Yes, we don't. Yeah. That's what I get for not spending enough time on this. Um, 
but here is where we could we could um, w w copy these over. And the difference here is we want to use a different ledger ID. So I can I can enter employees. in like that, um, and uh, it doesn't have a period. Uh, and, and then again, we're seeing those numbers that we know are in there. And you'd actually, you'd probably for period, um, you'd point to the prior column. And we don't need this. And then for ledger, um, I, the way I would typically do it is I would go ahead and, and put that in up here. So I can, uh, you, you know what a terrible typist I am. So I can say, no, I don't want to rename this, but I want to insert this um, and without a description, uh, I want to insert that. So I could have typed employees, um, obviously, like I did here. But then instead of having the hard coded in here, I could just go and point up here, F4, F4. And that's the way I would write this. And if you wanted to call this column, you know, as a header, something other than the statistical ledger ID, um, you could certainly type whatever you want and maybe, you know, go ahead and hide this. Um, this row, okay. So it's still pointing and seeing wrong row, seeing employees there. Um, but you know, you you could rename this FTEs as the column header and hide this. And obviously, that's not going to change the numbers. And it's getting a ledger ID from now from that hidden row. And then when I drill down again, I can see oh. That's how many are in administrative office. We don't have sub account names here. Um, this is interesting because in the demo system, there actually is no sub account with all zeros and AA for the third segment. And that doesn't matter when you're working with statistical ledgers or budget ledgers. Th these don't have to be um, sub accounts that you have created in the system. And how, if, if you were here last week, you, you I think you know where those zeros come from. Um, those are just when you're working with uh, a mask for your sub account, and so you've got these question marks, it still needs um, a valid sub account, not necessarily a valid sub account in that you've set it up in the system, but a valid sub account because you can't use question marks um, as an actual ID to create a, a sub account. So we're using these obviously as our wildcards here, but it has to put them in using valid IDs, valid IDs in these segments. Um, it, it has to be using a sub account that, that it is valid even if it's not uh, one that you're, you've actually created. Um, and you can look at last week's and uh, when you first um, use the budgeting option, it's gonna ask you, hey, if you left wildcards in one of these segments, what ID do you want to use? And it'll give you the list of, of valid IDs for those. So, <clears throat> so you know, you, you, you've got your salary number here. <laughs> and again, I didn't realize we didn't have any numbers in here. Um, and then the number of employees. And then, you know, you want to see the uh, uh, salary expense divided by the number of employees. And and you obviously know how to do that in Excel. And just like uh, one of the earlier sessions I did on showing variances, you don't want these divide by zeros either. And so in that case, you know, you use, use an Excel if statement. So if uh, number of employees equals zero, then let's just put a blank in. Okay, otherwise this. And then copy that down. 
Okay. Whoops. For those divide by zeros, I I don't like to show a number because <laughs> it's it, it's an it's kind of an imaginary number. So I just like to show blank, um, and it doesn't matter what uh, format you're using uh, for your your cell formats. Um, if you put a blank in there, it's going to see it as as text, uh, a blank text. So any numeric formatting that you use, you know, like oh, let's we we want to use the accounting uh, format here, so it puts dashes in. Uh, so I don't want to see a dash for these either because it's not zero. It's 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 a mathematical impossibility of dividing by zero. So any questions on any of this? Or anything else to do with Excel statements? Anything else to do with Excel? Remember, if you come to a Wednesday session, um, come with your list of Excel statements questions, because I want these sessions to be a lot of Q and A, and it doesn't necessarily have to be on the topic at hand either. But you know, I get I face to face, I get questions from users all the time, and I'm not sure why people aren't saving up those questions or, you know, to ask me here. And of course, if you're on the email support, you can also email me with any questions on Excel statements or Excel. But if that's it, that's it. We've got a lot of shy people out there. So uh, that's it for this week. See you next week. Bye-bye.